So it really is about giving yourself permission to change your identity and, and embrace all that comes with that. that we are creatures who are motivated by emotion, not so much logic. I mean, how many times has there been something in your life where you're like, oh my God, that would be so fun. And in your mind, you're like, it's not the best idea, you know, for whatever reason, but if it's going to be amazing, you're probably going to do it, right? So if you can connect to the emotion of it and keep yourself so psyched up, that'll sort of bulldoze over all the steps in between. Everything we think creates our realities because beliefs are just thoughts that we're in the habit of thinking and our beliefs create our actions, our actions create our habits, and our habits create our reality. So it all goes back to what we think on a regular basis. So keeping your mindset strong is paramount to your success. Dear listeners, this show is brought to you by Freeletics. Building a fitness routine took my life to a new level energy, confidence, health, feeling good about my body, staying young and agile. But most of us find it enormously difficult to build such a routine. The motivation is lacking, the workouts feel bad, the plan doesn't adapt, the success doesn't materialize. But it is possible to be healthy, fit, and enjoy your life. Because I certainly did not want to be held hostage to a fitness routine or feel that I am somehow missing out on life just to be fit. For those willing to invest a few minutes of their day to develop a determined lifelong workout routine, Freeletics offers a simple lifestyle, personalized workout plans, and data-driven insights to maximize your likelihood of success while having fun. Start now at freeletics.com. Also, this show is sponsored by Stadia. The scientifically proven benefits of training with weights are indisputable. For the major physiological systems in your body, such as muscle size, strength, athletic performance, functional capacity, also for the increase in bone density and the improvements in cardiovascular, cognitive, and psychological health. Working out with weights is almost a magic bullet. And now you can have all of these benefits at home. Stadium offers you high quality, stylish weight training equipment that you will love to have lying around your place. Get it at stadium.com. Thank you for supporting the show and checking out our sponsors. And now, Let's start with the conversation. Welcome to This One Life. Today on the show, Jen Sincero. Jen is a number one New York Times bestselling author, speaker, and celebrated voice in the self-development world. Jen, great to have you on the show. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> what is the story behind You Are a Badass? How did you invent that? Well, basically, it came out of my own journey, and um, I was, and it was mostly around money for me. Um, I had a really great life. I was doing a lot of fun things, but I was so broke, and I was living in a garage in an alley when I was forty because I had no money. And I finally was just like, "What is my problem? This is seriously the best I can do." So, I started reading a lot of self help books and hiring coaches and and really learning about money and educating myself and and mostly working on my mindset around my beliefs around money and why I thought I couldn't make it and all that stuff. And so You Are a Badass came out of, you know, reading all of these books that were so, so, so helpful for me. Um, but also being kind of like, how come none of them are funny? And how come none of them have curse words? And um, and you know, and I was a writer before all of this. So I was like, I could write the hell out of a self-help book. So that it was really through my own journey of reading all of these books that had incredible, incredible information, but weren't as entertaining as I wanted them to be. So I put my own spin on them and wrote my own version. And was that really, so this revelation that, Hey, a lot of the literature out there, um, 
seems that it has the right content, but it's just too dry. It doesn't have the humor, you know, everything they're talking about. Was that that key insight that triggered you into this massive action to build that, uh, I'm going to call it empire that you have built then in, in that short period of time? Yeah, you know, it was definitely that. And it was also this incredible fire inside of me that was like, if I can get my act together, because remember, I was 40. I had an entire lifetime of being in this identity as somebody who couldn't make money, who sucked at it, where it was impossible. And I got over it and I started making lots of money. So I was like, my God, if I, Jen Sincero, living in a garage in an alley at the age of 40, can turn my life around in such a massive way and really shift my quote unquote reality, anybody can. And so I really wanted to share this information. And I felt, you know, again, all of these books are so helpful for me, but I felt I could reach a whole new audience that was, um, I was pretty snarky, very judgmental about how feel good and woo woo and rah, rah, all of these old books were. So, um, I knew there were other people out there like me too, who are like, eh, I don't want to be associated with that. So I wanted to welcome in all of these other people who needed help as badly as I did uh, and uh, make it make it sort of safer and more fun for them to to turn their lives around too. I can see where success comes from. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling for the last three minutes uh, here. <laughs> um, I think that, I mean, before going deeper into some of the work that you've done and how that can help our audience, maybe we're already crossing into that with my next question. But when you talked about your personal experience, um, even before you underlining this identity change, I marked that as this is really remarkable because, I mean, I don't know how you have been living your 40 years before that, but um, as of your explanation or description, it hasn't, it, it didn't go in an optimal way. At least when it came to material criteria, it was not really a success. And snapping out of such an identity into one that allows for massive action and, and confidence in that process without having figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? Because the science behind this, um, behind being a person that is a certain identity, has certain values, has certain core beliefs behind you, is so powerful. It's very difficult to get out of that. But it's more difficult to be in it if you're unhappy. And that's where I really, you know, again, it's all mindset. And especially like in fitness to keep going, right? To push through wanting to stop or being tired or all of that, it's all mindset. So when you decide, it all comes down to that decision, really. Every huge change in your life comes down to the decision to do it regardless of your history, your past, all the proof you have that you suck at it, how you're feeling, all of that comes behind the decision to do it anyway. And that's, so that really was what changed my life was I decided that I was done with it. I was so, being broke, among many other things, it's terrifying, but it is boring. You can't do anything if you don't have money in this world, right? That's that's how the modem of exchange in the world of how you like get stuff and have freedom and options and all that. And I was like, I don't, I am done buying into this idea that I can't be doing, have the things that I want in this life. And it was the decision to do it regardless of all the proof I had that I sucked at it. Was it part of that motivation, if I understand you, uh, understood you correctly, the pain of the situation? And if, if, if that is the case, what do you think about this? I mean, I'm, I'm overly generalizing here, but this current that we currently have in this society where, you know, it's perfect how you are and you're, you're great. If there is an issue, then it's an issue with somebody else or the world has an, has an issue. Um, what, what do you perceive that too? What do you think about that? I think that's an awful way to live your life because then you're handing all your power off to the world and other people. So yeah, but it's just... a great way to feel because, Hey, it's not my fault. You know, it's, it's the other person's fault. I can bitch about that somewhere. Well, then you can't change it if it's their fault. If you but... take responsibility, if you take responsibility, then you're like, all right. You know, you can think what you want to think about other people in the world and all that stuff. But if you really understand that you have the power to make massive changes, then you get the power back. If you're waiting for them to stop being a jerk 
or to stop thinking or behaving certain ways and you have no power. I agree 100% with you. But do you have the feeling that generally society moved more into that direction that you're that you're basically um, here proposing, or is it rather moving away from this taking radical responsibility of one's own fate and 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 stop using excuses or you know trying to find the fault with others? I am going to say that it's moving in the positive direction that I'm talking about because yeah. only because yes, I really do believe that, and you know. I'm in my own reality bubble and whatever, but just knowing how successful my book has been and how the self-help industry is bigger than it's ever been. I mean, I don't know about you, but every time I go to the airport, it's all self-help books in the front of the store. It's all about mindset and getting your act together and taking personal power. So I feel like it's growing. I feel like there is a mass consciousness that's shifting. Believe me, I think there are plenty of people still in the victim mode, but I'm optimistic about it. It's 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 interesting. So I'm um I do see these lighthouses, you know, these these areas where that's happening. Overall, my perception was is more that it's not, but I'm gonna double check. Maybe I'm really biased corner. You know where your social media feeds are already optimizing uh, to, towards um, yes, right. th towards your existing biases. <laughs> sure. um, well, in in this in this lifestyle, well, let me start other way around. That maybe already answer a lot of the questions. So before diving deeper into certain areas, this term badass. It has become central to your to your brand, to what you're helping people to understand. So in that context, what does being a badass mean? Um, it means allowing yourself and deciding to create anything that you want to be, do, or have. And I have to say, like, you know, I've been a coach for so many years and I've been doing this work for so many years and it really comes down to giving yourself permission. It's interesting. I, I really feel like at the end of the day, more than explaining how this works and, you know, giving people ideas and blah, blah, blah. It's mostly about permission. It blows my mind where having the audacity to say, I want to get rich. Like, that's not okay in a lot of cultures, right? That immediately we think you're going to do something to compromise your morals or you're a bad, greedy person. But being like, I just want freedom and options and I want to be in the flow with abundance. Like, that's what it's about. But you need to give yourself permission first. And when you change your identity, let's say, let's say you're someone who's just always been kind of out of shape and that's how everybody who knows and loves you associates you to, to change that is going to change your relationships with other people and your relationship with yourself. And that is terrifying to people. So it really is about giving yourself permission to change your identity and, and embrace all that comes with that. It's a terrifying thing because it's unknown. So having the courage to change is humongous. And I feel like being a badass is when you give yourself permission to leap into that unknown and do it even though you have no idea what's ahead of you. It's exciting. And from your uh, explanation, it, it seems also being being okay with formulating just the goal that you really have. I, I had to I had to smile when you when you said in, in many cultures it's not okay to say you know, money is a motivation. I want to, I want to became, become rich. Um, but I, 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 I think that to a certain extent, because of that, this, this phrase was invented and money doesn't buy you happiness. Well, mm -hmm. yes, it does not per se buy you happiness, but it makes it a lot easier um, to, to, to be happy and, you know, solves a lot of problems. But, um, it, you know, this, it, this, this, this phrase is almost the, yeah, I, I don't want to be rich because then I'm not happy. Or I'm not a good person, right? We, and believe me, there are lots of people who do horrible things for and with their money. I'm not saying, you know, but there's also lots of people who do incredibly beautiful things for and with their money, but we tend to focus on the bad stuff, right? And we make it seem like all of our values and morals go flying out the window when we focus on the unholy dollar, right? It's interesting. So I, especially with, I feel like sex, money, and religion are the three most loaded topics 
in, in the human sphere and money may be the most loaded. I really got to say, cause I've been talking about money for a long time and it's like, wow, people. And, and the thing that always, and I'm not going to go too deeply into this cause this isn't about money, but I just think it's so interesting. Like if I said right now, I'm going to give you $10,000, you'd be like, sweet, right? Who would turn that down? But, but if, if I made you admit publicly on the public stage that you wanted to get rich, that would be a very uncomfortable thing to say. Yeah, We all want money, but we don't want to admit it is basically what it is. Yeah, there's unfortunately, there, there's a little bit of stigma around that, that if you are, you know, as you said, if you're rich, then certain other values might not be really good with you. And and to to some extent, it's also an observation problem because what we... I mean, it, this is very stereotypical, but just but just to make that point, like um, compare two rich people, the the one is extremely superficial, really just about like showing off, um, showing off uh, with the money and um, and acting a jerk in the restaurant and and all of these kind of things. That's very easy to observe. You see that person, you see that behavior, and it's done. All the people who are wealthy but don't necessarily show off the money and just behave like nice and friendly people because they're nice and friendly, you don't see that they're wealthy. So you only see the negative example. That is a great, great, great point. And so you're just illustrating where you place your focus creates your reality. Whatever you focus on becomes real and the truth. Wow. In that badass mindset, um, how do you help people prepare for for failure and and maybe you know try to embrace more of this growth mindset where you value the process and the learning over the immediate outcomes that you have because to a certain extent you're not always on, in control of your immediate outcome but in control of the process and the effort and the learning that you put mm, such a great question uh focusing more on the moment than the goal. I mean, you keep your goal in mind, but if you can appreciate where you're at in the moment and that you're showing up and that you're doing the work and enjoy the journey, I know that's really frou-frou, but it really is about that. It's about being in the moment and being like, my gosh, I'm, this is happening. I'm focused on my goal that I'm excited about, but I'm just excited in this moment that I'm on the way. And even, even a failure, like even a setback, it's like, great that now I have more information. Now I learned what I did wrong or the, what I can improve on. And now I can be even better in the next moment. It's all where you decide what you choose to focus on and how you choose to perceive things, everything. Is that then also the case for, let, let's say I want to, I want to do something. I want, I want to achieve something. And I know the steps towards them, but I don't enjoy them. I just don't inherently in, in, enjoy them. Let's say, let, let's say I want to be a successful podcaster, but I don't, uh, but I'm, I'm bad. I don't know how to talk to people. And there's a very big hurdle um, um, about that. Like, do you have a specific technique or structure how people can still um, embrace that 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 journey and do these steps, although they don't like it. Or is your magic, which is also like a very valuable thing, is your magic? Hey, I give the people so much starting energy, so much starting motivation, so much momentum that they basically flow through this. Okay, um, I don't like the actual process, or at least have to learn how to like it. Right. Um. Well, I can speak to this personally as somebody who does not enjoy writing at all. No way. And yes. Well, but then so you then, then you've chosen a that. very interesting career. I know. But what I love is having written, like the satisfaction of having a book out that I that I'm proud of is what I focus on. And also feeling like I can I have a gift for conveying ideas in a way that people can really receive them and and um focusing on helping other people. So there, you know, there's certain things about writing that I do love and that I'm so grateful for. And that is what I focus on. I mean, believe me, my writing process is a total train wreck. <laughs> I was like, get in my bathrobe. I write the whole book in a month. I eat ice cream the whole time. I'm in a bad mood, but I get it out. But what I do is I, I know I've made the decision. First of all, the decision is everything. I'm going to keep coming back to that. And, and I'm more, I stay connected to the 
satisfaction of having it done and the connection with my readers that I, I know is, is going to happen because of this. You just got to connect to the joy of why you want to do it in the first place. Why do you want to do this podcast? What is fun? You wouldn't do it if there was nothing good about it, right? So you just focus on what's good about it and what you really are truly excited about and why you feel called to do it. And then you you get into the process as you know when you just do what you got to do and and delegate as much as you can to other people if there's stuff that you really can take off your plate but then you just you keep attached to the feeling of joy that does exist and sort of don't focus on the pain that is also there it seems that you um with your approach are much more focused on the why than the traditional habit formation um I, I want to say industry for lack of a better word. Uh, did I focus more on why yeah, you're making a habit instead of the yeah, minutia? Yeah, it, it feels that the re the why, the reason for why I want to do something is a much more yeah. central pillar to your concept rather than, you know, the this typical, okay, um, you know, trigger action reward thing where you right. where, where you then try to implement it. Well, I think it's all valuable. I think it is important to to pay attention to the triggers and the actions and the rewards. Like all of that, it all helps. Like anything you can do to help you get where you want to go, I am 100% down with. But I also know that we are creatures who are motivated by emotion, not so much logic. I mean, how many times has there been something in your life where you're like, oh my God, that would be so fun. And in your mind, you're like, it's not the best idea, you know, for whatever reason. But if it's going to be amazing, you're probably going to do it, right? So. If you can connect to the emotion of it and keep yourself so psyched up, that'll sort of bulldoze over all the steps in between. Is is there a process or a concept of how I can how I can make it easier for me to keep this initial um, motivation? Let's say I let's say I have felt this initial spark of emotion, it, like I felt it in some way. I want to pursue that goal then my my goal and process hits reality oh damn it's much more difficult to get up at 6 a.m in the morning than i thought oh damn it's much more difficult to be in the gym than i thought and oh no now i've done that two weeks and i still don't you know see see any results and so yeah uh, is there a way to 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 keep that spark um burning for a longer time yeah and listen i'm not saying everybody's got to be all this is so great. Like, of course, life is, we have our ups and downs and I don't expect people to be in love with their goal 24 hours a day. So I think it really comes down to um, remembering why you're doing, just really putting those reminders in place. So um, let's say it is getting in shape and you have a wedding coming up that you're going to be in and like keeping that wedding dress that you want to fit into like hanging by your bed. So when you wake up, you see it and you're like, I'm going to have the best body for my wedding. Like whatever little tricks you can do to remind yourself why you're doing it is really, really helpful. And also I'm a huge believer in chunking things down because I think one of the biggest killers of all habit formation and all goals is overwhelm. And, and this disappointment of, I don't see any changes yet, right? Like you want immediate gratification. So chunking it down into smaller moments and being like, okay, I'm in bed. It's freezing out. It's six o'clock in the morning. I got to get up and go to the gym. Are you kidding me? There is nothing I'd rather do more than just lie here. Um, in that moment being like, you know what though? Just today, I'm going to get up. Just, just this one time I'm going to get out of bed and I'm going to do it just today. Instead of like for the rest of my life, I got to get up at six in the morning. If you can just make it, our brains get into overwhelm so easily. So the more that you can chunk it down into little bite-sized pieces and, and remove some drama from it, it's going to benefit you so much. That's um, what, what you explained as far as understood is chunking down the action that I, that I need to take. Um, in, uh, in, in Badass Habits, do you also cover chunking down um the actual goal or what you have to achieve i mean this could happen in various ways for example you have a weight loss goal then it's not 20 kilograms that you want to lose but it is right. two kilograms per month and it is a half a kilogram per week or, or something like that or um or saying in order to reach that goal i think i need to 
hit the gym 20 times over the next three months. I need to eat every day a bowl of veggies and I need to do X, Y, Z. So um, this type of um, chunking down the, 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 the outcome um, or, or how you measure your goal, basically. Yes, absolutely, because it makes it less massive. I mean, you can do anything for 20 minutes, right? Or you can do anything for one day. But that whole, that monster goal is just, it's, it just seems impossible before you get started. I think this is honestly the biggest downfall of people, that, like the whole New Year's resolution. You make some grand statement about, I'm going to lose 50 pounds this year, and it's going to take a while. So if it's like, I'm going to lose one pound this week, that's not so massive, right? Do you, um, admittedly, the biggest problem will likely be to get people to generate this, this energy to start working, um, on what, whatever their goal is and then to keep going. Do you also face problems on the other side of the spectrum where you, where you guide, um, your readers in a way that, Hey, do a reality check. Is this really something that you that you can achieve that is worthwhile doing or um, helping them to um, prevent overaction where you're only running fast, fast, fast and not really making sure that you're running to the right direction? I do think it's really important to check in to get quiet and um, block out all outside opinions because especially now with social media and all this comparison with other people and the way you should look and the way you should be and how much money you should make and what you should do, like all that stuff pulls us away from who we really are and what we really want. Like it, you can really lose sight of it, right? It's so easy these days of, do I even want the big fancy house? Do I even want to weigh this amount like what what do you really want it's it can be very confusing because we have so much input from other people's opinions really and so this is i'm a huge screamer and yeller about meditation i think meditation is easily one of the most important valuable things that we can do with our time so getting quiet and blocking out all the outside stuff, including our own belief systems, by the way, which have been absolutely formed by all of this outside input and getting quiet and in touch with what lights you up and just who you really are is so valuable to do every day, to keep checking in with you, to keep checking in like, what is exciting to me? Who am I? What do I want? What's important to me? Uh, I have so many things that I would like to ask you about. I'm going to uh, put meditation down as one. just. Uh, another topic before uh, diving into meditation, do you recommend to talk about your goals or are you on that side of, you know, shut up, work, uh, get the results in and let the results speak for themselves? I am a big fan of talking about your goals, but I'm also an extremely big fan of only talking about them with people who are high frequency and like-minded and cheering you on. You do not talk about your goals. People are going to be like, wow. You've tried to lose weight before. Why do you think you're going to do it now? Or any, you've got enough of your own fears and worries and doubts to drag you down. So do not talk about your goals with people who are going to drag you down even further. Only talk about them with people who are going to cheer you on and share their resources and believe in you. Okay. So first of all, making sure that it's the right crowd yes. to talk to. Um, we have been struggling with with giving advice on this topic because at least two main areas of research point into slightly different directions when when it comes to this the one is around obviously there's some social i mean the negative sense is, is the negative side of social pressure the other one is social support um when, when you um when you basically talk about your goals and that can help you stay um stay on track stay consistent and so on so keep working so that's a positive side where these social dynamics help you on the mm -hmm. other hand, there has been research that has shown that talking about what you want to do gives you similar dopamine hits than yes. when you actually do it. And so that right. then reduces your urge then to actually go out and execute on your plan. 
Right. I totally know what you mean. Um, okay, then I'm going to say you get to talk about it when you're in process, not before. Got it. <laughs> okay. And only with really excellent people. <laughs> I agree with you. I think that's totally true. No, that, that makes sense, you know, but it's just the stereotype where somebody tells you, hey, I'm working on this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this big thing. I'm going right. you know, to embark on the journey. I'm going to launch that company. I'm going to do all of that. And then you meet that person one year later and like right. nothing has happened. So you're saying actually be in the process of doing it when you talk about that. Exactly. Some- you only get to talk about what you are doing at the moment, not what yeah. you're going to do in the future. Okay, noted. We note that down as a rule. It makes a lot of sense, right? It's good. <laughs> um, just because you because you mentioned meditation beforehand, when you when you when you speak about meditation, what type of meditation do you mean there? It sounded it sounded to me like reflection. Do you meaning is that the meditation, or uh, is there some other? Um, type when you said, hey, this is likely the most underrated thing? Mm. Oh, well, listen, I think any any kind of slowing down and tuning inward is A+. plus. So it doesn't matter if it's a guided meditation, if you sit in silence, if you meditate with other people you know if you sit down and decide that you know okay i'm going to get quiet for 10 minutes and then i'm going to focus on a specific thing like what do i really want do i want a b and c and d like for me i i feel like and this is a much much bigger topic but we really are spiritual beings living in a physical body and whether or not you buy into that but whether or not you buy into that, quite frankly, we have so much outside input coming in that this this valuing our own hearts and our own needs and our own journey on planet Earth, you know, we get one shot at being us. Why not spend the time to just get quiet and find out what us is? What's more important than that, instead of blindly stumbling through and trying to please everybody and being, you know, right and and doing things the way you're supposed to do them, why not? I mean, honestly, there are there's nobody who inspires me more than people who are just going for it, especially the super weirdos who are doing something that's so against the norm, but they're so lit up and it's so cool what they're doing. And they don't give a crap what anybody else thinks about them because they're so on their path. I mean. Isn't that a fun way to live your life? <laughs> I um, I agree, and n- not necessarily. So I'm likely on the how spiritual are you on the lower end of that? But I think okay. independent of how spiritual you are, just the notion of shutting out the outside world for a few minutes every now and then, and and experiencing yourself without output from the the outside so that would be the first stage so listen to my own thoughts and how i how i feel what i think about things and then maybe even one step further trying to just not think and not consume and 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 and, and, and not do anything for a certain while which most of the people never do um I think that in itself is so valuable. If you do that from that perspective or more out of spirit, out of a spiritual perspective, it right. both comes down to spend a little bit time with your with yourself. Because you know what is a habit that people don't realize? Your beliefs are habits. So what you believe to be true is a habit because beliefs are just thoughts that you think over and over and over. And so when you have all of this outside input and you've created these belief systems, based on what society's telling you, what your friends are telling you, what your parents are telling you, that you hear it over and over and you think about it over and over and it gets lodged in your brain as a belief. That is a habit of thought. That's all a belief is. So if so, you can go through your life on this autopilot, this habit of beliefs that aren't even true for you. So that's why getting quiet and pulling back and being like, do I honestly believe I should get married and have kids? Is that really what I want? Or 
is that just something that I've picked up along the way and I'm do- doing on autopilot? Like what truly makes me happy? So it's a very profound thing, especially, you know, time is a finite commodity and it's the most valuable one we've got. So to not waste your precious time on earth, marching along with these quote, unquote, you know, these beliefs that you take to be truths and questioning them being like, huh, actually, this is who I am and this is what I want. And I'm going to spend my life creating that instead. Two things I would like to follow up because this resonated deeply with me, just because you mentioned it uh, in, in the end, this um, time is time is finite, time is finite. Um, it, it sounds so cheesy, but if you live according to, to it in a, in, a, in, a, in a responsible way, according to it, I find it very powerful. What my wife and I often do is when we are, before, when when we are taking the decision, we we literally say to each other, "Life could be over tomorrow." This mm. this this should not um this should not incentivize us to do reckless things because you know if you would literally think that life is over tomorrow, <laughs> you would go crazy. Flip over some cars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. But just reminding ourselves that you really don't know how many years, how many days, how many years do you still have to live and and especially this this feeling that time time is just there and it's and it's free and and you still have a lot of time you you don't time is time is maybe free but it's the it's it's the most it's the most scarce thing in the world you can never get it back you cannot put a price tag to it and who was that who um who had this concept around the death calendar I am blanking on I'm blanking on that person's name, but it's basically the concept where you have a calendar somewhere on 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 your wall saying this is the likely the amount of days that you still have left if you just think that you will live on you know up to an average age. And those are just you know if if you're if you're forty fifty, these are a couple of thousand days. This is really over fast. So I love that I love what you said here with um, time is is precious and 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 keep that in mind. Uh, when you said beliefs are habits, that directly resonated with me um, with a slightly different angle that that you shared afterwards. So I'd love to get your uh, thought on that. And that, that is, um, when, when you say be- beliefs form your habits, it resonated to me with me because um, in my mind, it, I, it immediately went, okay, the beliefs that are whole, the, my really deeply ingrained beliefs, they almost define me as a person as 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 a, as 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 a personality as an identity and um there's a lot of there's a lot of research and, and around this if you form an identity with values deeply ingrained in you they re- really um steer your behavior long term i am a person that values hard work that's why you work hard i am a person that um does not like to be told what he's what 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 he's supposed to do that's why i'm anti i'm you know i can't work well in hierarchical system all of these kind of things and so um if i may uh, and then also shut up but you know translate that into a key thing w- w- what you said and where your um, badass habits then con- connects to um an adjacent space for me is this form your identity what and who you want to be, which beliefs you really hold. And um, they might not um, help you like keep your habit on every given day, but in the general direction of your life. And over time, they will, they will guide you um, and, and, and help you behave in the way that your identity that you took um, would want you to be, um, behave. Yes, I think that I, if I understand what you said, your beliefs will help you stay the course if your yes. identity, if you identify it. Yes. But here's the thing I'm going to say is make sure that they're really your beliefs. That's, that's the thing because we can, we can sometimes just be on autopilot and then you wind up 10 years later having achieved this goal that you thought was who you were and you thought what was making you happy but you were just uh, subscribing to the beliefs like I should become a doctor because that's what my dad was and that's what my parents expect of me and that's what will make me loved and 
seem successful, but I really want to be a ballerina. Like, and you know, but so getting clear and listen, we're all figuring out. It's not like you have this certainty at all times about who you are and exactly what you want. And nobody's, nobody's perfect that way. And you do learn as you go along. So of course, get out there and try things, but keep checking back in and seeing like, does this feel right for me? No, I'm going to change course. Yes, I'm going to keep going with it. But just to, I don't think, my big thing is I feel like so many of us don't take the time to question our belief systems and to question why we're doing or saying something. Am I doing or saying this to please somebody? Am I doing or saying this to look cool? Am I doing this or saying this because I really mean it and it feels good to me and I feel like it's valuable? You know, just taking that pause to to check in with yourself. It's yeah, if, if you if you if your ladder stands against the wrong wall, it doesn't matter if you reach the top. Um oh, other neat analogy. I never heard that one. <laughs> oh, I love that. It was a very bad, almost literal translation from a German, from some, from, from, you know, from, I love from, a, German, from a German phrase. Great. I'm stealing that. <laughs> um, are there, you have shared a couple of questions that you could ask yourself to figure out whether your beliefs are actually the right ones. Are there more like that? Or is it really, you know, these fundamental questions, Hey, how does this feel for me? Um, and do I just really just literally have to ask myself, is this really what I want to do or is it um, what somebody else wants to do? Or is there a little bit more magic that I can apply in my questions to help me figure this out? I mean, at the end of the day, I really do feel like it comes down to feeling like, how does this feel? And, and you know, listen, I do believe that people are intrinsically good. So it's not about how does this feel for me at the expense of other people, right? Usually if you do something crappy to somebody else, you don't feel good. So when you feel like, does this feel good? That really is, I, I feel like, how does it feel? And why am I doing this? Or why am I about to say this? Those are sort of my big go-tos. When I remember to check in, I think it really is mostly about remembering to just pause, mm -hmm. check in and be like, how does this feel? Is is there a way to help me figure out whether if I do have this feeling that, hey, for some, it, it doesn't really feel good, whether that is because I actually am on a wrong trajectory in life or whether this could be a case of the grass is always greener on the other side. I want right. to give... I want to give two examples to this, um, to, 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 to this, because the grass is always green on the other side, only halfway describes it. The, the one thing is that for certain things to make them good and worthwhile, you need to put in some effort and also go through some, some moments that you don't really enjoy. And these moments, depending on what the topic, it could also be sometimes a few months or years. So for example, long lasting relationships. You have to work through them and not all of those years are fantastic. So every now and then, you know, there might be a time that is more difficult, but overall it's worth. So that could be an example. The other example I am um, as an entrepreneur see very often is you start with an idea. You're so hyped about that idea. You're so bought into, and then you, you are at that place where you're actually in execution and you figure out how things are always 10 times harder than what you assumed and take 10 times longer than what you assumed. And then it just feels easier to jump on, on, on a, on a, on a different, on a different thing. So pausing yeah. here for this is it really a wrong trajectory versus the grass is always green on the other sure, side? it's such a great question and and a very i get it a lot and and the answer is very unsatisfying i'm just gonna tell you <laughs> it comes down to practice so getting in tune with your gut and your intuition and well i have a couple things to say so the inner knowledge right so you practice figuring out am i scared because I'm going to get eaten by a lion or am I scared because I'm being a wimp, right? Like which are the two, like, is my fear leading me in the right direction or is it leading me in the wrong direction? And I really believe it comes down to practice with that intuitive knowing in your gut and just practicing it. And part of the way of practicing it is making a decision and screwing it up and being like, whoops, that was me being a wimp and I should have stayed the course. Like, but getting, again, being self-reflective and connected to yourself and and learning how how it works you, so that's where, yeah 
I have one more thing to say about it too. I also, I really value, and again, it totally, you got to choose your people wisely, but getting counseled from people who are way smarter than you and way farther along in the process than you and asking them for guidance. So you mean being, asking people, but being selective about the people. So you know, oh, will they have, yes. you know, will they have my best, will they have the best for me um, um, in, in their hearts? Um, so do they want to have the best for me? Do they have a relevant perspective on this? Because with some people, I mean, I have that also in my friend circle when I'm talking about entrepreneurship or something like that. I have people I know if I go to them and say, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm dying to do that, who will tell me, no, it's risky and, 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 and uncertain, all that stuff. And then on the other hand, I know who will be definitely cheering for me. So I can almost select which answer I will get by just, just choosing the person. Yeah, no, seriously. And then, you know, don't ask your broke friends for money advice. Like it's such a, we, when we do, stu I mean, we all do stupid stuff like all the time, but it's like, you know, that's, that's why I'm also such a huge believer in getting a coach. If you, um, you know, Olympic athletes have coaches, they're at the top of their game and they still have coaches. So there are people out there who can really, really, really help you and save you so much time and money in the process. Getting a personal trainer, you will get in shape so much faster than if you do it on your own. I think unless you're incredibly motivated and certainly there are people like that. I'm not usually one of them. So I know that I need to pay to have somebody to but it's, it's, it's the best thing I ever did in my business, certainly, was getting a business coach. I can relate to that. I have a, a you know, half business coach, ha half um, psychologist since four or five years, and that has been the best uh, investment ever. Yeah. Um, do you, do you, uh, um, can you give our listeners um, one or two thoughts on how to differentiate situations where you just, you know, just decide? Go, go for it, um, t take massive action, see what happens versus, okay, wait a moment, you should slow down and this one really think it through. I think if, you know what? I think that's a great question. I'm not even sure I know how to answer it. Um, I think it is um, spe specific to the actual situation. Um, if again, I'm going to go back to feeling, I'm going to be like, if you, if it really feels fun and if it, and if you're not getting any giant red flags and it feels good, I think you can make an instant decision on certain things. And if you get that feeling like, I got to think about this for a minute, then think about it. I think you can do both. I also think that there, um, you know, and you may screw it up in either case and then you'll have more information. So I don't really feel like there's a right way or a wrong way to do things. But I do think feel if you get a strong hit on something, go for it and see what happens. Um, what What do you think about um, so uh, Jeff Jeff Bezos? Um, he has a famous way of describing um, how how to how to differentiate between these two situations. Um, and and you know there there are people with mixed mixed opinions about that. I like it a lot how he thinks about it. And he he basically is a very simple has a very simple analogy. He says if the situation is a one way door, think about it long and precisely if it's a two-way door then just go for it so um in in his how he builds a business if it's a decision that can be revoked easily so it's a two-way door you can take it and then you can go back just the the number one thing you need to optimize for is just speed 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 anyway like you know the uh, if it if it is a clear decision what is better or wrong you know take the better decision go for it and if it's a close decision so where we'll start thinking about it likely it's almost like a coin flip way and take the decision because it's you don't have the right the perfect information um and you ha you're taking assumptions so instead of spending time on that decision just take one decision and because you can revert it back speed is the thing but if the so you know that 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 is where do you where do you want to go on vacation um where do you want to go to eat uh, to to dinner tonight all of these kind of decisions but if it is a one way door so there's massive pain involved in revoking the decision should i get a divorce for example this is something where it's not speed but really thoroughness of the of the um decision um, of the decision process actually thank you for educating me that was very helpful <laughs> yeah that's great i love that um are there any key concepts in, 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 in your book, Badass Habits, that we haven't talked about that you feel the audience should have heard about 
in order to have a round, you know, picture of what they can expect when they um, have a read in, in your book? Mm. Um, yeah, so uh, a couple of things that come to mind immediately is um, I, I talk a lot about not getting into the negotiation process with yourself. When you've made a decision, let's say, to work out every day, um, the second the negotiation to, well, maybe just today I'll blow it off and I'll do it. The second that rears its head, you do not participate. You catch yourself. You become really, you make the conscious decision to be on the lookout for that and no negotiation. There is no negotiation. And I, I always compare it to, I don't wake up in the morning and negotiate about whether or not to drink a bottle of vodka for breakfast. It's just not who I am. It's not what I do. So when you decide that you are somebody who is in shape, who is dedicated to working out, you don't negotiate with not working out because it's not who you are. You don't enter into the negotiation process. You wrap your whole identity around it. And I think identity is another thing when it comes to building strong habits is spending some time on creating the identity of the person that you're becoming before you become it. So when I was quitting smoking, um, which was very challenging for me. I, I'm going to start smoking again when I'm 80. I can't wait. It's keeping me healthy for my whole life. Like that's why I'm staying in shape. But um, I really adopted the identity as somebody of somebody who was healthy, who had pink, healthy lungs, who took great care of her body. So that when the option to have just, just one drag of a cigarette won't kill me, like it didn't even... I, I wasn't available to negotiate with it because that was so not part of my identity. It really helped me so, so, so much with that. Um, another thing uh, that I think is really important is what I call habit tracking. And a lot of people who talk about habits talk about habit tracking because the reality of most habits is they take for freaking ever to get to the results. So instead of tracking the results, so let's say you are going to lose 50 pounds and you lose half a pound or I guess kilograms um, in a week, um, track your success in just showing up instead of the actual result that you're seeking. So today I exercised, I ate really well, I took care of my body, I did all of these awesome things. So just track the showing up and the amount of time that you're showing up and doing a good job as opposed to the actual result that you're looking for that may take longer so that you can keep that enthusiasm and keep being proud of yourself and just really stay in the game. Um, another thing that I scream and yell about as much as I scream and yell about meditation is what I call going to the spiritual gym. And you don't have to be spiritual to go to the spiritual gym. But um, it's basically what is your daily practice of keeping your mindset strong? Because mindset is everything. Everything we think creates our realities because beliefs are just thoughts that we're in the habit of thinking and our beliefs create our actions, our actions create our habits and our habits create our reality. So it all goes back to what we think on a regular basis. So keeping your mindset strong is amount to your success. So what books are you reading? What music are you listening to to pump yourself up? What people are you hanging out with? What speeches are you watching? What exercise are you doing? What specific things in your day? And I mean, you got to be specific. You can't just be like, in general, I listen to good music. I hang out with good people. You've got to have a practice like a gym practice. And that's why I call it the spiritual gym practice. You go to the gym for 45 minutes every other day. What That's your gym practice. And that's how you keep your physical body in shape. You got to do the same thing with your mind. So what do you read? How long do you read for? Do you do it in the morning? Do you read for 15 minutes? Do you meditate for 10 minutes in the morning? Like when do you do it? And what are the specifics of it? And have that as a no nonsense, very locked down practice and treat your mind like a muscle, the muscle that it is. I, I have to say I'm I'm a fanboy of 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 all the things that that you're saying. Um, is 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 actually not the best thing to 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 be as a podcast host because you're also supposed to supposed to ask critically. But I really love the the concept that you just mentioned. I mean the the don't the no negotiation process just so speaks so much so speaks to me. Um, 
when I translate it to fitness and health, I always say there's no day that I don't do a workout. You can do a short workout if you really can't do anything else, if you're, if you're not recovered and all that stuff. But like, there is no day I do not do anything. Um, and and you oh, also when you talked about the identity and smoking at the AT, I have, a, I have a standing, it's half joke, but I think I'm actually going to do it is once I turn, I'm not sure is it 80 or 85, but I'm going to try every drug that's out there. I mean, what's yes, supposed, what is, what is supposed to happen? Long-term consequences? I mean, come on. <laughs> Heroin and cigarettes. I'm in. It's like, <laughs> and actually it might, it might be, it might, I don't know how many 85 year old people there are who are addicted to heroin. So no, I don't want to, I don't want to make fun of, of, of heroin addiction. That's the wrong thing, but just like the general, the general notion of that, you know, at that age, you can do a lot of things, but when long-term consequences don't count anymore. Right. Um, and, and, and yeah, the other spiritual gym, I don't know whether that counts. Um, so does it count? So every morning, my daughter wakes up some somewhere between 5.30 and 6 a, and it is basically my job to take her out and get her ready for Kita and, and, and all that stuff. And it's early. And so I, and, and of course, it, because it's early, you're tired and all of these kind of things. And then, you know, sometimes in the mornings, my daughter's grumpy and, and all that stuff. Like I... I, I came to a place where it felt like a burden to do that in the morning. And then, um, and the, here's my question, is that the spiritual gym? Um, I, I reframed this whole thing and, and said, like, I get to spend. So every morning um, when I get up, I don't turn that phone on. I get myself into a mindset saying, I now get to spend one to one and a half hours with my daughter. You know, it's something that will strengthen my bond. I will I will look at that as 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 precious time that 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 is that that I'm looking forward um to that builds my my bond I, I'm looking forward to it I'm not going to think about I'm tired and and something like that and only once I'm in that the mindset I get out of bed I love that that's brilliant right and that's a choice that you make like where you place your focus determines your reality so you could have the reality, I'm tired, I'm in a bad mood. I wish my kid could sleep later too. She's never going to be this young again. And what a precious, precious experience this is going to be. That's all a choice. Fantastic. Yeah. So I got a check mark on my, my spiritual gym, uh, and, uh, and spiritual uh, yeah. gym habit. Um, Jen, as last question. Now we've talked so much about badass habits, you know, as an overall headline. And despite your energy and motivation, what are the areas of your life you would like to change the most? Where do I start? Well, I right now, I mean, I'm so grateful for everything, honestly. Um, I feel like I would like to change my story about hating writing, actually. That would really, like you, like, Instead of going at it with, oh, it's so hard and I'm going to eat like crap for a month and, you know, just focus on what I don't like about it to shifting, to making the choice to shift, to be like all the things I love. Because it really, it's such a drama and it so does not need to be. And so yeah, taking my own medicine on that one for sure, because that is a whole identity that I've created about someone who hates to write. So that is my commitment after this call. So thank you very much. It's going to be very different experience of my next book um and also getting in shape i i have slacked off on that and that has not been a priority i'm in pretty good shape but i would i'm excited to um take it more seriously and use a lot of the discipline that i use in other areas of my life to 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 focus on my body and, and make that much more a priority thank you for sharing your yeah. energy is is just great Likewise, um, where should our listeners go if they want to find out more about you or your work? Uh, they can go youareabadass.com, leads you to my website, as does jensincero.com, but that's harder to spell, but it's J-E-N-S-I-N-C-E-R-O.com. Either we'll one of those that, leads. We'll put that same in the show notes. Way. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's really it. And the same thing on Twitter and Facebook and all that. Instagram, Jen Sincero is where you can find me. Um, and then what I just realized, I mispronounced your name in the beginning. Please apologize for this, Jen. Um, uh -huh. And thank you so much.
for spending the time here and inspiring um, our audience, definitely me, and all the best going forward. Likewise, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me on. This is really, really, really fun. Thank you for listening to the show. I would love to get your comments, suggestions, and feedback. Also, if there's a special topic you would like me to address or someone specific you'd love to see on the show. If you want to support me, please hit the subscribe button and leave me a rating. I hope you will listen in again on the next show. Until then, all the best.